Welcome to the Ditsy Chicks with Jamie and Mary. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm Mary. Uh, today we're going to talk about wedding guests, do's, and don'ts. Uh, Jamie is currently going through her blog because she thought she had something on that. Um, do you want to plug your blog real quick? Sure, I haven't posted it yet, um, but I will post this. Um, She's got after... other posts, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just the one. <laughs> I have this amazing blog and there's only no posts because this one is only not posted. No posts. <laughs> um, but I have, um, I'm working on a blog post right now. It's um, 10 reasons to elope. So if you're currently thinking about doing that, you know, planning your wedding and you don't know what to do or it's too stressful and you're like, man, I just kind of want to go away and get away from everyone that's causing these stress because a lot of times it is your guests and people attending your wedding that does cause you stress absolutely so um it'll be <clears throat> top reasons to elope and i will be posting that um right after this episode airs so you can check out my blog it's um the midnightqueenblog.com and look up some reasons to elope in case you're thinking about that absolutely so um we are still on the topic of weddings <laughs> we figured we might as well make it a theme and continue on and uh because we before we started the podcast we made a list of things um that we wanted to talk about and a lot of them kind of ran into each other um so as i was planning out our basically two months of recording um i tried to keep the theme fluent that way we weren't jumping into topics just willy-nilly and basically giving everybody whiplash yeah. Um, back and forth, back and forth. Snip, snap, snip, snap. <laughs> um, so yeah, like the last episode was our weddings. Um, what we liked, what we didn't like, what we would have changed, what we would not have changed. Um, and this time, like I said, we are going to be talking about guests and how you should act and how you shouldn't act. Um, I was telling Jamie that I went onto the Col Cosmopolitan website, um, for reference because my wedding was so small um that a lot of that I didn't get to experience as like a big wedding setting but I know a lot of people do want a big wedding and are planning a big wedding um so I wanted to be able to have the material for you guys um but I worded them as my own so it is not plagiarized it's just uh inspired <laughs> by Cosmo um so you want me to kind of just jump into it yeah, for okay. sure. So the first one on my list is do not wear white or any variation <laughs> of it, which I almost had a problem with with mom. Do you remember that at all? Yes, because mom loved white. Yeah. And at least she asked. <laughs> yeah. Well, she no, she didn't really ask. It was kind of brought up in conversation. She was like, oh, okay. she was like, I'm thinking of wearing like a cream. And I'm like, don't. I am. She goes, you are? And I'm like, I'm the bride. <laughs> <laughs> but she ended up she was planning on wearing like a gray to match dad's suit because she yeah. had picked out dad's suit mm -hmm. so that yeah. was that was what she ended up going with yeah thank god she wouldn't have pulled a kelly rajnaganda kapoor <laughs> <laughs> it was an emergency yeah i look good in white <laughs> that's when you get wine spilled on you <laughs> i honestly we would have had a bigger wedding i remember talking i think i brought it up to you but also to dylan that i wanted to have like um water balloons full of paint that the bridal party could have to throw at people that were wearing white or any variations of oh it. Oh my god. And it's like so amazingly petty and I love it. That's that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but like don't fucking wear white to somebody else's wedding unless it's yeah. got a pattern on it. Yeah. If it's got like a floral definitely. pattern or something, that's fine. But just a plain white cream beige whatever champagne don't do it. Yeah. That's well, the bride's also, job. Well also like why? Unless the bride why would is you not want wearing white. To? Like, why would you want to? Right. Where, like, honestly, mom, she's a ditz. And she <laughs> loved white stuff. Right. That was just her so, style. Yeah. Um, and that's what she just wore a lot of anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, most, like, it's, that's a common thing. That's just, that's common sense. Yeah. You don't wear white to somebody's wedding. And if, if you... <clears throat> do you're just asking for problems honestly and like, what are you what is your angle like what are you trying to get out of that anyways if 
I view that as if you're wearing white to a wedding, you're trying to cause problems. You're doing it on person to cause issues. If you're single at the wedding wearing white, (laughs) I view you as a homewrecker. Get the fuck out. (laughs) Stay away from my mans. Just saying. (laughs) God. Uh, And that goes into the second one. Mm -hmm. Do follow the dress code and the theme. Yes. Please don't be the person that disrespects the bride and groom's wishes for what they want their style to be. I remember when we were planning the first wedding, Mm -hmm. um, we were doing semi-formal whatever, um, and we had put on the invitations, do not wear jeans. No denim of any kind. How many people asked you if they could wear jeans? Only one. Oh, okay. And it was my stepdad's father had said something to my mom. Mm -hmm. um, And my mom asked me, and I said, no absolutely no denim and she was like specifically on the invitation yeah and she was she said that he said well i guess i'm not going then i'm like fine stay home yeah (laughs) right um it's my wedding not yours right so it's about me and what i want yeah um but don't be that person that doesn't follow the theme the vibe the dress code because you're an asshole right especially if it's ass like yeah you know some couples are like hey we're gonna make this super relaxed because we don't care yeah and that's fine right like it's your wedding, you do what you want. Like, but, but that's there are the thing. people that it want a specific look, especially in the pictures. Yeah. Don't be the person that ruins it. Right, <laughs> looking extremely underdressed. Yeah, in if the they if they have like a, a Hobbit themed wedding, and you show up looking like a country boy that just got out of the <laughs> fields, fuck you, <laughs> get the, get out. Don't go at that point. <laughs> Respect the theme. Karen. Yeah. <laughs> um. That goes into, do not be the asshole that stands out. That's why we have a bride and a groom. Yes. Yeah. Don't. I think that speaks for itself, yeah, too. Like, we don't need to even. Don't specifically try to make yourself stand out. Yep. It's not about you. Like all those about am the I the couple. asshole stories I've been hearing on TikTok yes. that, that's like, uh, it's a it's an ex or something that's going to the wedding and she wears basically a wedding dress to the wedding. Yeah. Have you also, seen that story? Also, why would you ever invite an ex to a wedding? Unless Isn't that bad luck? Probably. I've heard that I that's would bad luck that. to invite an ex to a wedding. And look what happens to everyone when they invite their exes to weddings. Yep. Some shit happens. Yep. Um, I mean, like, unless you share a kid with that person and you're like, hey, can you bring our child yeah. to my wedding? You know? And, like, that's fine. Right. Um. But, like, also, just... I don't know. I, I, some people do that. And some people like have really good relationships with with their exes that they don't have kids with. Mm -hmm. But like, why do you want to invite somebody from a a previous failed relationship to your wedding? Right. That just sounds terrible. Sounds like a terrible day. Yeah, absolutely. I I mean, there's a reason why that relationship failed. Yeah. Like it didn't turn out well. Like it doesn't matter if that person's a good person too and you just kind of mutually separated. Yeah. Like There's why a reason do you it still didn't want work out? The, why yeah. would you want to bring that to your the beginning of your new relationship? Yeah. Like that person still holds some kind of whatever yeah. in like in your life that is f- essentially failure. Yeah. Um I would not ever want to do that. Oh no. my god. That just sounds miserable. I'm just lucky that none of my exes I'm really in contact with anymore. Yeah. (laughs) I specifically made it a point to not ever be able to have any ex contact me in life. Like, it's like, dude, you ruined your chance. (laughs) We're done. I'm going to forget you exist. Yeah. Like, at all. I I don't want to hold on to you at all. I don't think... I, I think I've only had one bad breakup. And the rest of them were, like, mutual... I wouldn't say mutual, but we ended up being okay and on terms, but I don't talk to them yeah. anymore. We're not, it's not like a friendship type thing blossomed right. from it. I mean, <clears throat> at least if a friendship did blossom from it, it was before I was with Dylan. Yeah. And then after I was with Dylan, I'm like, I don't, I don't need this in my life anymore. Right. And I mean, that's even questionable. Like if a friendship blossomed from that while you're currently in a different relationship, it's yeah. like, hmm. Yeah. Hmm what's your angle yeah what's the motive there yeah <laughs> um, next do not bring a guest to the bride hold on do not <laughs> what the 
fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> Do not bring a guest the bride and groom don't know. Their wedding is not a meet and greet. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, if they say, yeah, you and a guest can come to the wedding, that's fine. Right. You know, because that at that point, when you're RSVPing, the bride and groom need to know how many people are going to be there. Right. So they need to know how many people they need to feed. But that being said, sometimes people want to bring people that the bride and groom don't even like. Like, I remember specifically telling one of Dylan's friends that his, they were still dating at the time. His mm-hmm. girlfriend was not allowed at the wedding and she was not allowed at our apartment because I did not like her. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a reason at the time to not like her. Mm-hmm. But there was just something about her that I was like, she's, for lack of a better term, evil. She didn't. <laughs> she didn't feel. And I mean good this in me. the nicest way possible. She's evil. Well, <laughs> not to. I don't want to drag it out, but she ended up not being good. So my intuition was correct. Well, there um, you go. But he was actually very nice, and he's like, yeah, I completely understand that because I don't think he liked her either. <laughs> <laughs> um. I hear what you're saying. I actually don't like her. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but I think we actually had some people, and you know who you are if you're listening. This isn't a dig at you. Um, but we had some people that were had asked me, like, hey, I was telling this person about your wedding, and they really wanted to come. Is it okay if I bring them? And I'm like, respectfully, no, because I don't know them. Mm-hmm. I know nothing about them. My wedding is not just a party that you can come to mm-hmm. if it was a bonfire and i wasn't getting married yeah bring whoever the fuck you want but yeah. i don't want somebody i don't know coming to my wedding because i'm paying for their food they're watching me in the most intimate moment of my life yeah i don't want people i don't know yeah there. Mm-hmm. yeah no that makes sense um and i mean like you you don't know that person they could literally be like oh yeah it is a party like i'm gonna go and get wasted and no. then ruin the wedding and they didn't even need to be there in the first place right and that brings us into do not over imbibe be mindful of your alcohol tolerance yeah and for those of you that don't know imbibe means literally drinking alcohol Mm -hmm. yeah and don't just think that somebody's wedding is an excuse for you to get plastered that's why i think weddings should be bring your own booze or they should have like a a oh, cut yeah. off, not like an open bar type deal mm-hmm. because those get expensive. Oh when God, we were yeah. looking at the um venue um that way, yeah. Um they had multiple options for their bars mm-hmm. and it was expensive. It was a gorgeous place, but yeah. it was a lot of fucking money for mm-hmm. just the bar. Well, yeah, and like you're not just paying for the alcohol, you're paying for the bartender yep. that has to be there. Mm-hmm. And then there's like the discussion of tipping, like do you have to tip the bartender or does the bartender okay with people, other right. people tipping? And then if, like, it's an open bar, you have to cover the tip because nobody else is paying. So yeah. <clears throat> um, that's how they get their tip. And it just – it adds up. Um, and this isn't because we're, like, very uptight people. We literally come from – No money. Lots of, yeah. No money. We're – our families have lots of people who drink alcohol all the time. Yeah. We've been around it. Um, I've been able to drink alcohol, you know, not in secret when I was underage because I was at home and my parents let me. Yeah. That's Safely. also, yeah. yeah. And that's also why I never went crazy being an alcoholic or yeah. trying to go out and party because it was, I was around it so much that I was just like, what's the big deal? What's what the fuck's the big deal? Why is everyone acting like this is like a crazy? Th- oh my god, let's go out and get drunk. Let's go out and get wet. Like why? That's that's why What's, I've never that's been that's drunk. That's not even like it's occasionally, occasionally in my early twenties did I go out and yeah drink, and that's because I was a very happy drunk. Like I was one of those like can't relate. I get <laughs> I get drunk and i'm like oh my god i love everybody like we're having so much fun yeah look i made a new friend oh my gosh this is so fun i love all of you guys like that's me i need you around when i drink the next time because <laughs> i drink and i get sad <laughs> do i do uh i is talked it... about it on dylan's podcast where for his 21st birthday what i was like you know what i'm gonna try it 
And then I got so close to getting drunk and I got so sad for no reason. It was literally the stupidest reason ever, but I got so <laughs> upset and I was like, I'm just going to go to bed. I don't want to do this. Um, but also, it was like a lot of sugary alcohol. Yeah. I, well, so, I mean, different alcohols affect people differently anyways. Yeah. Um, and that's another reason why you shouldn't go to somebody's wedding and decide to get plastered yeah. because what if you're drinking that kind of alcohol that makes you an angry alcoholic? Well, and that's when it comes to knowing what alcohol does what to you and don't decide at somebody's wedding to try a new alcohol and experiment <laughs> yeah. with it because if you don't know how it's going to like affect you, that's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Right. This isn't college. Yeah. This is somebody's wedding. Yeah. This is somebody's like <clears throat> everlasting memory. Yeah. Like they're going to remember this day forever. Don't fuck it up. Yes, contribute to the fun. Yes, have fun at the wedding. Yeah. Let the bride and groom know that you're having fun. Thank them for inviting you. Um, or you know, by most of the time at weddings, actually, if there is alcohol that the bride and groom are paying yeah. for or have there or whatever, they usually make signature drinks for the bride and groom. Yeah. Um definitely get them. Yeah. You know, hey, I got you a drink. Hey, I got the groom a drink. Hey, I got a bride drink. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just well, that's why honestly, don't be an idiot. We for for mine and Dylan's wedding, we went to a restaurant for dinner and we just had like a little intimate thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I told everybody before we went to the restaurant, we will be paying for the food, but the guests are expected to pay for their own alcohol because I'm not paying for you to get fucked up. That's on your <laughs> right. own watch or At on your restaurant. own wallet. Yeah. Um, but and the... plus you don't you don't know how much somebody's gonna drink. Yeah. Like, what if they're fine and then all of a sudden they get one drink and they're like, okay, I want more and more and they don't know how to stop. Right. Um, but you were talking about not fucking it up and being fun, bringing us into do not be inappropriate, not in speeches, not for songs, nothing. Read the room. Have you seen that? Oh, sorry. I got to adjust this shit. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that video of the guy he's the groom so it's kind of irrelevant but this is a good example of not being inappropriate the guy who's reading his vows and literally in yes. the vows he says oh as long as God. you keep my balls empty and my stomach full we'll be fine and then he says something about her being the only woman he needs unless he meets margot robbie and then you see the video of her vows and it's so sweet his fucking yeah. mom was their um, ordinator. Yeah. What the hell? Yep. I saw I that video. I hope the bad guy saw all the trash he got oh and my God. did some self-reflecting. I hope she divorced him. I hope so, too. Oh, my gosh. Like, I don't even know her, but I know she, didn't deserve she deserves that. better. Well, they were together for, like, 10 years, I think, and had two kids or something. Mm -hmm. And those are the vows she got from him after being together for 10 years. Yeah. That oh guy didn't know her God. at all. It that, was evident he did not know a damn thing about her. Listening to that speech was the cringiest thing I got, I've heard in a long time. It made me like time. sick a little bit because that was it I was. saw those right after Dylan and I got married, and I was like, if those were the vows that I got, I would have walked away. <laughs> Will you take this man? No. Yeah. I don't. I I'm left. leaving. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. But uh, like also, <clears throat> you have to like wonder. Is he like that every day? Probably. Ugh. Ugh. And you Gross. can tell that from the way she was laughing that she thought it was like cute and funny and quirky because that's just the way he is. He shouldn't be like that. Not, not after being together for that long. No. You should he have should be something to say about your That doesn't wife. revolve around sex and food and a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um, but coming back to the don't be inappropriate don't do anything like that for your like if you're the best man oh, yeah. or you're giving a speech mm -hmm. don't be gross about it um don't you know do super fucking inappropriate dances during the reception <laughs> yeah um if you do like a little video thing don't be gross uh be mindful of the couple yeah, you know, be respectful. If you don't know the couple well enough to know what they're going to think is funny or whatever, just just be kind. Yeah. You know, or don't say anything at all. If right. you like can't if your be motive, nice. Yeah. Yeah. If your motive is to like embarrass them and make a huge joke, like, oh, they'll laugh about it tomorrow yeah. or whatever. It's like, no, 
Just because That's not. Don't do that. Just because you think it's funny does not mean everybody else is going to. Right. And we know funny because yeah. we're funny people. I'm funny as fuck. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> that was funny though. <laughs> I laughed. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Every time I tell a joke, I'm like, Jamie will think this is funny. And that's good enough for me. <laughs> Usually when I tell a joke, if it's just me and Dylan, I'm like, it makes me laugh. And that's all that matters. <laughs> as I just told, as I just said, just because you think it's funny doesn't mean everybody else. <laughs> I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh my God. It's me. I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, here. The next one is here. Yeah. <laughs> Have this. <laughs> uh, the next one is do not use your phones during the ceremony. The bride and groom hired a photographer or a videographer Fuck's for a sake. reason. sake. Yes. It's, I can understand, uh, like while well, they're coming down the aisle, yeah. that's different. But once they're there and the whoever the fuck is marrying them, because they have different names, mm-hmm. um, when they greet everybody, put mm-hmm. your phone away. Don't be that person. You're going to ruin yes. the pictures. You're going to ruin the moment, especially if the bride and groom have specified it is an unplugged ceremony. Yes. And if they have, I mean... Most of the time, the bride and groom are paying a photographer to be there and yep. get pictures. Do you really think that your picture on your fucking phone is going to look better yeah. than the photographer's picture? I heard somebody use an excuse once. Um, I, somebody recently that I know was planning a wedding. And um, she had asked guests to not use their phones. And somebody else had said, well, they're your family. If they want to take pictures, they have the right to do so. The I'm sorry. Then it's, I have the right to uninvite them. Right. <laughs> if if my family wants to disrespect my wishes, this is me personally. If my family wants yeah. to disrespect my wishes for my wedding, don't come. Yeah. Don't even bother. Actually, you're uninvited. Yeah. Like, you're not coming now. I am planning my wedding for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I want it a certain way. This is not your big day. And I have said this a lot when I hear people talking about parents or whatever, mm-hmm. um, trying to tell them how to run their wedding. You have already been married. Yeah. You already you had, had your, your wedding. You had the opportunity to make your day the way you want it. It's mm-hmm. my turn now. You do not get to tell me how to run my wedding day. Yep. Yep. I'm so grateful that we didn't have either parents, and not that they would, like both my parents and <clears throat> my in laws are just supportive and respectful yeah and they never would have taken the reins on our wedding and been like no you shouldn't do that you shouldn't elope like no you need this you need that because that's what you do at a no like yeah we didn't really have that either and i was so glad nobody was explicitly like you should do this you should do this it was more like suggestions and then if i said no they respected it yeah so i was really grateful for that yeah, and that's um, fine. Like suggestions are fine. Yeah. Some suggestions are welcome. Yeah. Um I'm open minded. For yeah. The most but part. also please know that if you're suggesting something, I might not like it. Yeah. I might not like it and I might say no. Right. And <clears throat> that just that's nothing against you. It's just okay, I just don't like that suggestion. It doesn't mean I don't like you. Right. <laughs> it doesn't mean that we you suck tastes. helping me plan my wedding. Yeah. It just Um Wow, that was such an abrupt stop. I know. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> For both of us. The next one is do mingle with the other guests. But if you're introverted, just a little bit. Because um, I understand yeah. that if you're going to a wedding and you're introverted, you're not going to want to talk to other people. Mm-hmm. But I do think that you should at least introduce yourself and say like a little bit, you know. Don't be yeah. like a stranger. Don't be tucked away in the corner because. Right. Or don't, you know, if you're with one family don't just not talk to the other family yeah like it's there's two different families being joined together at this whole thing you're becoming one big family yeah i mean like you know if i'm the cousin of the bride i'm probably never gonna see most of the groom's extended family ever in my life but that doesn't mean i can't be like hi i'm the bride's cousin nice to meet you guys i'm so glad i you know i'm so glad our families are getting together Mm -hmm. real quick it's not that hard and 
again, if there is alcohol at the wedding and you need a little bit of courage, get that one shot, then go Take over some there. Take tequila. Yeah. And <laughs> tequila you don't... is the self-confidence boost. Right. Not for me. Tequila oh. just makes me throw up. Oh, yeah. I love I'm tequila. just a <laughs> sick person on tequila. I, I really love margaritas. <laughs> <sighs> um, but yeah, that's just a little bit like I, if you're extroverted, obviously that's going to come naturally. I'm yeah. extroverted. I love meeting new people. I always have. Mm-hmm. But if you are very much so like it, you don't like meeting new people, um, just introduce yourself and call it a night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yep. That's just, it. Yeah. Hi. How are you? Okay. I'm going to go get food. Bye. Yeah. And that's it. So the next one is do not be dramatic. Okay. Don't bring that drama to somebody else's wedding. They don't deserve fuck's it. sake. <laughs> don't. Don't be that person. Yeah. I don't have a for instance for that. Oh, we were going to talk about um, there was what almost drama have. at my wedding um, because as we talked about in the last episode, um, my dad didn't come and he showed up at the restaurant when we were all eating because my mom had said something to him about it, um, asking him if he had forgotten and he came to say congratulations or whatever. Um, and everybody like you, Stevie, Cheyenne, um a bunch of people were like looking to me for like what the fuck are we gonna do (laughs) and i at the time just wanted to keep the peace because i was like i'm not ruining my wedding day for this Mm -hmm. i don't deserve it um which i don't regret doing that at all i'm glad i didn't cause a scene Mm -hmm. but you also deserved for yeah stevie and i were actually talking this morning about if he had brought his girlfriend um, with him in that for instance if she had been with him there would have been drama i mm-hmm. would i told i told stevie on the phone this morning she would have seen me physically belligerent 100 because I, I had exp- i explicitly told him in a text message to not bring her to the wedding mm-hmm. and i believe that that's why he didn't come yeah but i really feel like that's why he did it's too. only speculation at this point yeah. because we already had a conversation about it and he didn't want to give me answers yeah. Which is a whole different thing we can talk about at a different time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure there would have been a lot of drama yeah. had that happened. You know what's cool, though? I fully believe if that did happen, when we were all there, like all of us in the wedding party, um, and had noticed that, I guarantee, like, 100%. Like, we would have seen... Because especially, like, Stevie and Cheyenne probably would have noticed. And well, been like, what the fuck? Stevie and Cheyenne saw my dad before I saw my dad. Yeah. So I guarantee you, she would have been seen before I had the chance to see her. And mm-hmm. she would have been handled before I had a chance yeah. to react. Honestly, you guys probably would have had it handled and never told me. And I would not have known. Yep. That's exactly what... Like, and... I would have been, what, eight, eight and a half months yeah. pregnant at the time. You were ready to pop. I literally, because Charlie was right behind me, I would have turned yeah. right around and been like, dude, get her out of here. She needs to leave. Yeah. Like, we all know. Like, she's smaller than of- I am. She's she's about Stevie's height. She's yeah. tiny. He could have picked her up and yep. just carried her out. He's a big old boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I say big old like, boy, like, I don't mean, like, a dad bod big old boy. Like, he's a big, yeah. strong country boy big old boy. And it would have been handled. Yeah. Like, I mean... Even like Oliver was there, and yeah, like, Dylan's groomsmen. Webby, like, we could, yeah, yeah, all of we them. We could have just been like, "Hey, you, you guys, we need I to get her one hundred out of here before Mary even." Which is anybody. why, like, I one hundred percent trusted everybody in our wedding party, mm-hmm. especially on the men's side. Um, to, I mean, I don't want to say protect me, but mm-hmm. if push came to shove, protect me. Yeah. And Dylan and mm-hmm. everybody. I 100% have that faith in all of Dylan's friends mm-hmm. that I trust them with my life and my daughter's life and Dylan's life. Yes. Um, and that brings up a really good point that I wanted to discuss in this episode is um, if you're asked to be in somebody's wedding and be part of their wedding party, actually hold yourself to it. Yeah. Don't just be in the wedding just to be in a wedding. You have expectations and you are to follow them when you're in a wedding party. Like, you know, hold yourself accountable. Don't be, um, for lack of a better word, a leech. Yeah. Like just along for the ride because you're in somebody's wedding. Like, no, they asked you to be in their wedding because they trust you 
they know that you're there for them. Actually follow suit. Do your part. Be there for them. Yep. Let them be able to trust you and be a trustworthy person. Yeah. Handle things that need to be handled. That's what you do when you're in somebody's wedding party, especially if you're um, the maid of honor, matron of honor, or the best man. Like, you know, actually do those things for the person who asked you to stand there with them. Yeah. Sorry, I'm writing a little note. You're good. Um, But yeah, don't be dramatic at the wedding. <laughs> or if you're a part of the wedding party, do not be dramatic and cause a scene throughout any of the um, planning process. Unless something's bothering you, bring it up. But don't be an <clears throat> asshole about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, if you've been invited to be part of somebody's wedding and be part of their wedding party and you don't feel up to doing it, you are more than welcome to say, no, thank you. I can't do that at this time. Or if you have agreed to it and then later on decide it's not something you can handle, it's okay to back out. Do yeah. not put responsibility on your shoulders that you cannot handle. Right. Just don't back out after you've already told somebody that you're going to handle this, that, and whatever yeah. for the bachelorette party or bachelor party um, or things like don't don't commit to stuff and then back out. Right. Like just kind of, you know, wait it out, feel it out. If I mean, it can be as simple as you don't like another person that's in the wedding party. If If you don't get along with another person – you can back out too. Like yeah. that's perfectly fine. Or if you really do want to be in the wedding, then you need to just get along with yeah. that person. Stick stick it out for the bride and groom. Yep. Um, the next one is be there on time, or simply don't go. <laughs> yeah, it's not like a better late than never situation. Right. They will start without you. <laughs> I told one one of my friends he was like, uh, I might not be there on time because he he was having issues with his wardrobe. And I was like, Okay, well, I'm starting at this time. Yeah. Like and I don't want to be an asshole, but I've right. been planning this wedding and I'm not gonna let it delay me. The only thing that delayed me was we kind of took longer getting ready. So I think we started like a half hour late. Yeah. But that wasn't we weren't waiting for guests. That was on right. our own accord. Well, that's also I mean, it's not like somebody was there doing our hair and makeup either we were doing everything like, ourselves we were yeah. all doing our own hair our own makeup we our were getting nails. ready yeah mm -hmm. i got press-ons for everybody um every i had a very much diy wedding mm -hmm. and it ended up being gorgeous half of my nails fell off by the time yeah. the ceremony started Same. <laughs> but it's whatever <laughs> um our photographer did an amazing job of making sure that like the hand that had what sucked though is that the hand my rings were on was the hand my nails were falling off of. Yes. And she wanted to get pictures of my hand. Um, but half but of my then... nails were gone. <laughs> so that's so when you strange. take the picture anyways and just um use your right hands and yeah. then invert the pictures. Well, <laughs> it's she, like the left. She hands. did a lot of editing though. I don't I'm gonna have to look back and see if she edited nails on or mm -hmm. if she just simply managed to hide my nails. Um, I was gonna say because there's ways the, to hold your hands. We had hold your fingers to hide your right. nails. We had candles outside that mm -hmm. weren't able to be lit because it was a it was breezy, mm -hmm. so the candles kept blowing out. But in the picture, she I think she edited on the flame. <gasps> Little flames. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah, that's so cute. She did an amazing job, yeah, Amanda. Job. If you're listening, I love the work you do. And if you are currently planning a wedding in Michigan and need a photographer. Amanda K. Photography, 100%. Mm -hmm. she, des she deserves the recognition, so I'm going to plug her handle. Amanda K. Photography, she's on Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Check her out. Yeah. Her pictures turned out great. Yes. She's super friendly. Mm -hmm. And her portfolio, like, of all the other pictures she's done, they look amazing. She doesn't she do does just weddings really either. Good. She yeah. does. Um, that's not to, like, me, you know, <laughs> but she does weddings, maternity uh, graduation photos. She does some just for fun photos too. Like she, um, she did a Valentine's Day photo mm -hmm. shoot with somebody, but she's awesome. I know. I really wanted to talk to her about getting maternity pictures yeah. done, um, because I was eight and a half months pregnant at yeah. the time, and it was just the timing didn't work out. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So unfortunate, yeah. but yeah, I would yeah. have done her. I was gonna say maybe for the next one, but then uh, I remembered you're no, done. No more. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> 
Um, that makes me really sad. Like I am, I'm not as elated as I sound. Like I am very, very sad that I'm yeah. not going to have another newborn in my life unless it's somebody else's. But like, you know, I can't snuggle somebody else's. The yeah, you're not, you're not going to have those experiences anymore. Yeah. <sighs> Speaking of kids, that brings us to do not throw a fit about the kids, no kids situation. Yes. Um, I mean, as a person with kids, like, I get yeah. being invited places and people being like, hey, can you not bring your kids? It's like, oh, kids can be assholes dude, sometimes. I totally get it because, well, also, like, every <clears throat> parent who, you know, any parent at all who actually parents their kids know that when you go someplace with your kids, you aren't enjoying yourself. Yeah. You're watching your kids. Yeah. If they're young enough, you are watching out for hazards because nothing is child, nothing's baby proof. No. Um, and it's not an enjoyable experience. Um, I mean, when I was planning my reception, like before we just decided to can all of that. Yeah. I, we were specifically going to have kids at our wedding because we had kids yeah um so we're like yeah just you know anyone wants to bring their kids they can and one of my friends specifically said i'm not bringing my kids because i want to be able to have fun which makes and sense. i was like yeah fair enough yeah like that's, that's you want to come to your yeah. best friend's wedding and actually be able to have fun without having to watch your kids the whole time that's perfectly acceptable i don't know if you remember but the first time we made invitations and sent them out i put on the invitations kids are optional but not mandatory <laughs> because I wanted people to know that their children were welcome, but they were not required to bring their children. Yeah. Because Dylan and I wanted to have kids at our wedding because we like kids. Yeah. And a lot of our family has, has young kids. kids mm -hmm. So we didn't want to have to put them through the stress of if, like, finding a babysitter if they didn't want to or whatever. Yeah. Like, if you don't want to bring your kids, mm -hmm. that's fine. If yeah. you want, if, if bringing your kids makes you feel better than not bringing your kids. Yeah. That's fine too. Well, also, you know, it's a sitter situation too. Yeah. Like, can people find a sitter right all night or for the weekend if you yeah. have to go away for the wedding? Um, I know that's really hard too. Um, one of the most recent weddings that I was at was actually uh one of my best friend's weddings. Um, last year, and if I can remember correctly, she specifically, or the couple, both of them, specifically didn't want all kids invited. Just they certain kids. They wanted specific kids. Which is okay, too. Yes. Because some kids are better than other kids about yeah. their be behavior. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, like, the kids whose parents were in the wedding party. Yeah. More than welcome to come. Um. Because, you know, those kids are our kids and right. stuff were, like that couple they're close to them. nieces and nephews and yeah. things that's you know the kids that you're close to it's perfectly fine to invite the kids that you're close to and say you know aside from those ones please don't bring your kids um and respect that i mean no i say no judgment here we are judging people who do <laughs> wrong things at weddings um but like you know no judgment if you don't want to have kids at your wedding kids are stressful they make yeah. messes they're loud they're obnoxious they ruin things. They break things. Yeah. I get it. I'm a parent. <laughs> yeah. I know kids do that. And if you don't want kids at your wedding, you don't want kids at your wedding. Right. That's and that's why fine. I kind of put both, like if like kids slash no kids. Yeah. Because that's completely up to the bride and groom. They mm -hmm. are paying for everything unless they're getting help from family members. But yeah. you as a guest, if you are not helping, even if you are helping with stuff, you do not get to tell the bride and groom that they can and cannot have children. If they say no kids and you have kids and you don't have a way to have, you know, a sitter for your kids, mm -hmm. it sucks, but don't go to the wedding. Right. <clears throat> that's that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, that and you do not get to make that the bride and groom's problem. Right. And to be fair, most weddings, you get the invitations, what? five months in advance yeah that's five, definitely five to three months yeah that's definitely enough time to find a sitter um he walked by with my kid and she's sleeping oh so i'm gonna go close that door 
Oh, Sorry. okay. <laughs> I love seeing my kids sleeping because she sleeps just like Dylan does. Mm-hmm. And I love seeing them sleep side by side because it's like a little mini him. They... And she already yeah. looks just like him. Yes, yeah, she does. Oh, so I'm going to close the door real quick. You can... Okay. I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, we were talking about kids, no kids. If, if you don't have anything else to say. Oh, it's the sitter. Yeah. You have ample time to find a sitter. Mm-hmm. Um, But also, you know, you have to... I mean, if the bride and groom aren't used to having kids, if they don't have kids on their own, at least just say, hey, we have a sitter, so it looks like we're going to be there. But there's always a chance that our sitter could cancel. Yeah. So we're going to try our best to make sure we can find a backup just in case. If not, we will not be able to make the wedding. And we're, you know, we apologize, but things happen. Yeah. Um, it sucks not being able to have a reliable sitter too. Like yeah. that sucks when you're a parent and you just can't do anything. And I hate it when people are like, "Oh, well, you chose to have kids, so let's that's what happens when you have kids." It's like, yeah, but it doesn't make it any less difficult to have. It's still stressful. With. Like, stop being a naive piece of shit when you yeah. say that to parents, like, especially the people that are childless by choice. Yeah. Like, you don't get to tell me how to be a parent, and you don't get to tell right. me that my being a parent was a choice, because I'm well aware it was a choice. But that does not make it any less stressful for me. I am not any less upset right. about the situation. I still have feelings that I'm allowed to have, just like you still have feelings that you're allowed to have. Right. They're just about different things. And they always say it, like, as if we regret being parents. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, well, that's what you get when you have kids. Oh, you should have thought about that. It's like, what? I did think about that. I'm just complaining because yeah. I need to vent somehow. Yeah. Like, it is hard. They literally are their own little people. Yeah. They are other people. They're not just extensions of me. They are They're their own person. actually other people. Yes. That's With- what kids are. Yeah. And they can't function properly. Like, they're just, they're little tiny people who have, like, five main emotions and cannot regulate them whatsoever. Yeah. And those emotions are like so heightened. Whereas because like they don't adults know how to control it yeah, yet. Adults hold back almost everything. Yeah. Uh, at least mature adults are able to hold back everything. A kid when they're happy and excited, they're overly happy and excited. Yeah. When they're angry, they're overly angry. Sad, overly sad. Yeah. There's no there's no getting around that. Like that's just what they are and It is what it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Do we have anything else on the list? Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, the next one is, we're almost done, though. Do not be a klepto. You didn't pay for shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that note, we actually had a groomsman who actually asked me if he could keep things, which I really appreciate because he was like, do you mind if I keep this? Do you mind if yeah. I keep this? And I'm like, yes, Andy, absolutely. You glorious considerate human you yeah but asking is fine if you can keep stuff but do not take stuff because just because you like it without right. saying something because you did not chances are you did not pay for that centerpiece the boot yeah. here oh i uh, love the centerpiece i'm gonna take this home yeah. since the wedding's over it's like what well, uh, what if they wanted that what, for something a right. lot of it, especially if the centerpiece has uh flowers a lot of uh brides and grooms now mm-hmm are taking the live flowers that they have for their wedding mm-hmm. and they're donating them to um, um, retirement homes. Oh, how nice. Yes, I I've seen that. that a lot. And it, I think that that's a nice little way to brighten them up. But yeah. if you, if if people take those, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> don't take shit that you didn't pay for. Even if you did don't pay be for a it. Yeah. Okay. You didn't pay for shit. <laughs> <laughs> um that's all i wanted to elaborate on there's not much i mean like a lot of times um the couple won't want to have to deal with the cleanup afterwards because there is always the cleanup like nobody ever thinks about the cleanup yeah um somebody's got to clean that shit up at the end Mm -hmm. and i remember staying for a friend's wedding and she straight up was like hey here take this hey you take that and you want this take this um and they had some really cool and unique decorations too like they had like um for centerpieces there were like these little porcelain animal figurines and each table had like you know different ones like one had like a little rhino and another one had like a little golden zebra whatever um 
obviously they're like we don't need all of these yeah um so here like they just kind of started handing them out to the kids Aww. um yeah there was like so many so many things are just like here take these and he, some people i've seen some people have like fish bowls as their centerpieces and huh. then they just gave those away and I'm like okay well that's a live animal that <laughs> yeah most people don't have the, the ability not, to take care of not but. to change the topic but speaking of live animals that nobody wants to take care of years ago i was probably like 13 i went to the fair with my mom's side of the family and my cousin she played one of those carnival games and she won a live goldfish. And I remember my aunt was like, I don't want this thing. <laughs> but they had it. And they had it for a long, long time. I think they named it like coconut or something. Aw, that's nice. And that goldfish lived for a long time. I don't think she has it anymore. But for not wanting it, they sure had it for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes <laughs> they live a lot longer than people expect. Like goldfish are disgusting. Yeah. I remember... I got one of those at the fair too, and I tried so hard to keep that thing alive. Like, I had a fishbowl for yeah. it. Like, and, you know, it wasn't anything spectacular, but. Um, Not like this shit was, we've got right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, this metropolis over here. This is what um, happens when your parents all have fish your entire childhood. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I remember I needed to, like, clean its bowl out and this was like the second or third time that i needed to clean the bowl out so yeah. i you know transferred him over to another little thing so i could clean the bowl out yeah. and get everything reset and all of a sudden he started kind of drifting sideways a little bit i wonder if it was the going temperature of the water you put him in was well, it the same it was the same water from its own oh. fish bowl and i and i really do think it was the temperature shock though too yeah. because I went to put him back in the bowl and I tried so hard to make sure it was the same temperature yeah. <clears throat> and he still died. And I Usually was just fair like, fish don't last long anyways. Yeah. Um, fair fish. It, <laughs> so, and after that I was like, I'm never getting another fish again because I can't handle being responsible for another life like That's this. Why I'm surprised it. we've had ours for so long. Yeah. <laughs> We've had ours, like, almost our whole relationship. <laughs> I know. You guys got those, like, right when you moved into your apartment. Yep. Like, a few months after. Mm-hmm. Anyways. To, <laughs> to go back on back topic. To weddings. Um, the next one is, eat what is served or don't eat at all. Dietary restrictions excluded. Yes. Um, if you do have dietary restrictions, definitely make That's sure. That's the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Discuss dietary restrictions ahead of time. Yeah. Um, but Which usually those are part of like the RSVP cards is like, do you have any dietary restrictions? Yeah. I know I put that on ours when we planned mm -hmm. the first one because we went through the knot for our RSVP stuff because I was like, I'm not I I hate postage. Yeah. I hate worrying about postage mm -hmm. and it's because I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. So because I don't want to deal with it, my brain is like, then you don't have to do it. And I just don't send stuff. Yeah. So that's why I went through the internet. And yeah, anyways. That's why I've never sent a thank you card in my life. Despite yep. filling out lots of thank you cards. The thank you cards you gave me for my bridal shower. I filled them all out. I had them all ready to go. But I didn't have stamps and I didn't want to go get stamps. So they Dude, sat stamps are expensive. I just recently threw them all away because mm -hmm. I had them all in envelopes ready to go. And they were just sitting in a bowl for almost two years now. Yeah. Or no, one year. It's been a it's mm -hmm. been a year. Um, I don't know. Thank you cards are just not it anymore. Like usually after, um, <sighs> what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like baby showers and w bridal showers and stuff. You send thank you cards and after yeah. weddings. You send thank you cards. We just never did. It's not. I a would thing rather that verbally say thank you. Yeah. It's. I mean. I think I did end up getting some of them out after my bridal shower. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I remember getting one because you wrote a little blurb on it. I was like, thank you for the cool tapestry because yeah. I got you that sun tapestry. And I really honestly, I had it on my fridge for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that was honestly only because one of my friends wrote down a list of who got me what when yeah. I opened shit up. Um, 
And that was really helpful. Otherwise, every single card would have been the same. Thank you so much for the generous gift. Yeah. Appreciate it. Love you. Um, And then I would have probably not even sent out those because they're so impersonal. That's And that's my problem. I feel, I feel like I'm not a big cards person to begin with. Like, I don't mind I receiving useless. cards, but... They just take up so much clutter for me, but then I feel bad throwing them away because somebody put thought into that card. But yeah. I don't like cards, um, and that's just a me thing. But I feel like I I feel like cards are very impersonal unless they're a handmade card. But who yeah. the hell is gonna make a thousand thank you handmade cards? Right. Not me. I don't have the time for that. Right. Um. I. You know, I also hate cards. I hate getting people cards for anything because to me, I view it as, oh, cool. I got a card that somebody else put words into yeah. that wasn't the person who bought it. And what am I going to do with it now? Yeah. Um, And that's why, like, when I'm a gift, giving a gift, it's like a notebook will be with it and I'll put an inscription in the notebook. Right. Like I said in the last episode, that's my card. That's yeah. my version of a card that's way more sentimental way more personal sorry oh you're fine i was just gonna say like when dylan and i had our baby shower um my mom and your grandma they Mm -hmm. were the ones that planned it Mm -hmm. and to say thank you to them dylan and i got them little gift um gift uh bags and i put like bath and body work stuff in it and then Mm -hmm. we went to christians and we picked them out uh some flowers that reminded us of them and um that was our thank you to them because i knew that i was like yeah fucking way better thank you yeah well also most of the time like when somebody gets you something at your bridal shower or baby shower or whatever like you give them a hug before they leave and you yeah. say thank you well that's like my mom <laughs> at the baby shower my mom had mentioned how long it took me to open stuff up and i'm like that's because i wanted to make sure i told people thank you mm-hmm. as i opened it because i knew i was gonna forget later and some of those people left in the like in, before, the middle of- in the middle of it or before I even got to open stuff. Yeah. Um. So I wanted to make sure that I, I said thank you when I had the chance. Mm-hmm. Wow, we did not talk about dietary restrictions at all. But no, those are self-explanatory. <laughs> um, eat, eat what's given yeah. to you, or don't eat at all. Don't complain about the food unless you have a dietary restriction. But if you have a dietary restriction, discuss that shit ahead of time. Yeah. Um. I don't know if this one's on your list, but. Um, since we just kind of touched on it a bit, don't not send an RSVP. Yeah. If you don't send an RSVP, don't fucking go. Yeah. Or bring a fucking sandwich in a chair because <laughs> your seat and your food are not going to be accounted yep. for. And don't text the couple saying, hey, we'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. Like the day. Don't do that. Um, and another thing that I don't know if it's on your list, but please don't be this person. If the wedding is somewhere and the couple, you know, put the address on. And a lot of people go as far as sending you specific directions yeah. to know how to get to the location or even a small little map. Don't be that person that's going to text the bride or groom the day of uh-huh. and say, hey, how do you get there? Yeah. Don't I think, fucking do that. I think I had somebody ask me what the address was for our wedding. And I literally told them, I was like, it's on the invitation I sent you. Because <laughs> oh I, I was like, I'm not doing that. It's on the invitation I sent you. I'm not sending that shit again. Yeah, no shit. And it's literally, it was at my house. I yeah. know I already sent you the address yeah. for that a year ago when you came over. Yep. Um, Asshole, you know who you are. And I think this is another thing that's a don't um don't try to text the bride or groom the morning of the wedding if you are not in the wedding party that happened to me yeah if you are just a simple guest they probably will not see it fuck off and don't bother the bride and groom they are literally trying to get ready for a whole ass wedding yeah because it's the morning of their wedding don't reach out to them they're probably not going to be on their phone whatsoever. Dude, I didn't see the text and phone calls that I got until it was too late. Right. Because I wasn't on my phone. I was making breakfast for everybody because we got ready at the house. So everybody yeah. came over. I made breakfast for everybody. Yeah. I made the mimosas for everybody. Then yeah. I had to get ready and I had to make sure everybody else was ready and get my daughter ready and make sure that the guys were getting ready. And plus when they took everything down, I 
I didn't as much so, but I had to make sure that they had everything they needed. Yeah. And I didn't even get to do that. Right. So yeah, don't be that person. Yeah, because that's annoying as shit. Mm-hmm. And then like, also, you're you're texting the bride and groom and expecting them to respond to you. Yeah. That's a very high expectation. They've like, already got so much shit on their mind. Right. That's so inconsiderate. If you have a means to contact somebody in the bridal party, yeah. Like ask the them party. or a yeah. parent. They will right. one of those people will know <clears throat> what's happening and will probably be able to answer your question probably better than the bride or groom. Right. Um because they were appointed to help yeah. with all of that shit. Yeah. That's why they're in the wedding party. Um, yeah, just don't be that idiot, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that's just annoying. Uh, do not cause problems about the guest list. So, like, if you don't like somebody that's going, you don't get to complain about it. If you really have right. that big of a problem, don't go. Right. But hey, don't can complain. you uninvite this person because I don't like them? No. Yeah. It's my wedding. I like this person, so they're coming. Right. Um, which we talked about before was almost an issue. Was I think was the main issue I had with my dad was I told him that his girlfriend, quote unquote, was not invited. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, we didn't have any issues mm-hmm. with anybody else. So that was nice. Mm-hmm. I do have a funny story, though, about weddings and guests. I love funny stories. Guests. So, um, I met my husband at work, um, and I also met my best friends at work, Mm -hmm. um, aside from the best friends I went to high school with. Yeah. Um, so my other two best friends, um, I met them at work and, um, when I met my husband at work, you know, like I was like, Hey, you know, these girls are my best friends. Um, so of course, you know, we all give each other shit and stuff. And, um, at one point, one of my friends had said to, well, you know, he was just my boyfriend at the time. Um, but they said, Hey, careful, because I'm definitely going to be at Jamie's wedding, but you might not be, (laughs) um, said that to my husband. And, you know, and that's just one of those, like, funny things that yeah. you say because it's like, oh, well, I'm her best friend and I've been here for a long time and I'll be here after you, yeah. too. And um, the funniest part about that was none of my friends were yeah. at my wedding. But he was. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and my husband was like, ha. You thought. Yeah. I showed you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's funny. Um, the next one is do not offer to pay for anything just to have the wedding the way you want it or for manipulation. And this is mainly for parents and grandparents of the Mm -hmm. bride and groom or maybe even, um, wedding party people as far as like bachelor and bachelorette parties go Mm -hmm. because a lot of the times a lot of the people going to the bachelor or bachelorette party would be like, well, I'm not paying all this money to do this. That doesn't sound fun. It's like, yeah, that doesn't well, sound not fun fucking to me. about you. Yeah, this is about it the is bride a, and right. groom and what they want to do yeah, before they get married. Yeah, fun for them. Yeah. So, um, there's that. Um, and then, yeah, as far as, like, grandparents and parents, when parents are like, well, I'm paying for the wedding, so you're going to have – these people come you're gonna have our cousins from here attend the wedding you're gonna have it this way you're gonna have it here you're gonna have you know this table here and i'm gonna be sitting at this table and you know so and so Mm -hmm. like you cannot dictate somebody else's wedding just because you're paying for it paying for a wedding is nothing more than a gift yeah it is a gift for them for their wedding and Mm -hmm. that's it you can't essentially blackmail somebody yeah. because you're giving them a gift of money so that their wedding can partially yeah. be paid for. Or Do you for. remember when I had told you that my father had offered for me and to pay for mine and Dylan's wedding? Yes, I um, remember that. He was talking about having it at the local church. Uh-huh. And um, I had expressed to him that I was not comfortable with that because I haven't gone to church in a very, very long time and I do not plan on going to church anytime soon. Mm-hmm. And I viewed 
me having my wedding at a church to be disrespectful to the people at the church and to the pastor. Yeah. Um, well, and also it's it's not really an embodiment of you yeah. either. Yep. So I had asked him, is it okay if um, we have the wedding elsewhere? Um, and I explained to him what I just explained to you. Mm -hmm. He never answered me and then did not say a word about offering to pay for anything after that. And I am 100% convinced because of that interaction, or I guess lack of an interaction, mm -hmm. that he wanted to pay for the wedding to make sure I had it at a church and to make sure that our family friend was the pastor for it and um, to make sure that his girlfriend was invited. I am 100% yeah. convinced that that's why. Do yeah. not be that person. Yeah. The, the, the bride and groom will resent you for it once they come to the realization that that's the only reason you wanted to pay for their wedding. Yeah. You did not want to help them. You only wanted to do it for Control. your own personal interest, which right. fuck that. Be a better yeah. person. Fuck that because you should have already had your own wedding that yeah. you could have done those things for. Um, your children are not <coughs> you. They are your own, they are their own people with yeah. their own interests and their own reasons for wanting to have their wedding a certain way. Um, and yes, like, you know, oh, tradition. Well, it's tradition. Like sometimes tradition is more harmful than it is good yep um and there was something else i kind of wanted to say off of what you had said mm -hmm. and now i can't remember I'm sorry uh That's do okay. you want to do the last one because the last one goes into our next topic sure follow the registry exceptions are yes. sentimental handmade or heirloom gifts Yes, I wanted to make sure that's at the for top the of the love list, of God. but I wanted to mention it last because that's a good segue into following re registries and why you should just follow them. But like I said, exceptions are sentimental handmade and heirloom gifts. Yes. Um, but like real handmade. Yeah. Like real, like don't do like the cheap, like, oh, I had like a custom t-shirt made for you. Right. No, like actual Like a quilt handmade. or something yes. crocheted or, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, not like you that, got a glass off of Etsy that has right. something etched into it. Yes. Something that you put time and effort into yep. that you created for yep. the bride and groom or the parents, yep. the new parents or whatever. Like one of my grandmas made this key holder here that's got pictures. It's oh, on the other yeah, side yeah. of the wall. It's got yep. a picture of me and Dylan the as a baby one. and then Dylan and I together and then Dylan and I's graduation pictures. Yeah. And then my other grandma, she made me and Dylan a quilt for our wedding mm -hmm. so i've got a quilt for when i turned 16 a quilt for um mine and dylan's wedding and then a quilt for jay from my baby shower Aww. so like stuff like that yeah 100 percent sentimental stuff yep great like quilts that are handmade by family members fucking great yeah. those are such great things to pass down to like your kids and your grandkids like oh hey great grandma made this yep. along like those things are so nice to have mm -hmm. um and so, like, I mean, that's handmade stuff. Family heirlooms. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are great. Um, I have um, a sentimental spoon ring from my dad's side of the family. Mm -hmm. um, and that was actually – I ended up having to trade one of my spoon rings to get that. Okay. Um, which is really funny because – What is a spoon ring? It's – it's a, a ring made out of, like, the handle of a silver spoon. Oh, okay. Like, you know, like, the decorative, like, the old vintage. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, you don't have any spoon rings? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, my, my gosh. My family might have some, but I don't have any. Oh, that's crazy. I'll have to show you some of mine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, because my grandpa had it because um, I think my great-grandma and grandpa had – four matching spoon rings made for all of their kids okay so naturally like my grandpa being the boy gave it to his wife okay and um his wife is just you know my step grandma not um my grandma, blood grandma, grandma. yeah <clears throat> um so then she had it because you know she's part of the family and that's his wife yeah well then her daughter ended up wearing it for a while mm -hmm. and she always said that she never felt right wearing it. Right. Um, because my step grandma never wore I don't think it fit her or something okay. like that. So she never wore it. 
So, and then I was wearing like a regular spoon ring that I got at like a secondhand store or something. Yeah. And so then she was like, hey, um, if you give me that spoon ring, I'll give you this actual spoon ring that I feel like you should have. Right. Because it's a family heirloom. Right. So, and that's how I got that. Nice. Good. So I have that now. Um, Definitely not at any kind of thing that yeah. I registered for, but um, there's a fun little story. Um, <clears throat> but going back to actual registries, please don't be that person that reaches out and says, hey, what do you really want? What, what can I really What can I get you that's not on your registry? Um, everything, everything that's on my registry is things that I want. If I, it's not on my registry, I probably don't want yeah, or need it. Unless it's actually just fucking money. Yeah. I don't want it. Right. Don't get it for me if it's not on the registry. And I feel so much like this is like, oh, all of these girls are like registry snobs. Like, but it's for real. Like, I spend time. What's a registry for then? Right. Why would I make a registry just for you not to follow it? Dude, I spent so much time going through. And finding stuff that I wanted that we needed for our house. Yeah. That we, ju- you know, that we wanted slash needed. And just everything that would, you know, match would go yeah. with our home or whatever for, like, our wedding registry. Um, And I remember I wanted specific colors, too. And not that I'm not grateful. And this is, this is such a controversial topic topic i feel like because so many people there's it's literally 50 percent of the people will say just accept the gift with grace and return it or give it to somebody else my thing is is if you give me a gift i will feel bad about returning it or selling it because somebody gave me that thing yeah i don't want to i don't want to have to return or sell something Right. Why won't you just get me something I asked for? That way I don't have to return it or sell it. Right. It is not hard. It mm-hmm. is not hard to get somebody something that they actually want. That's actually and on the fucking list. And if you list. know that person well enough, getting them something that they will actually want should not be a hard thing for you. Right. Um. <laughs> it really shouldn't. Especially when they literally put it all on a magical list yeah. and fucking spell it out for you what yep. they want. Um. I I have been this person a couple times, but only because based on like my own experience of registries and getting things that I want and didn't want, I know for a fact when you get lots of stuff for a baby shower, a wedding shower, mm-hmm. things like that, a lot of times, depending on where you are in life, you don't know where you're going to put that stuff. Yeah. So multiple times I've specifically asked the receivers of these things or like, you know, the people throwing party. Would you rather me, would you rather just everyone else get you the things off your list and me get you large bins to put all your shit in? That's a good idea. Yes. That's a really good Um, idea. I did that with my cousin because um, they were getting married but they were – they still are renting a small duplex. Yeah. So they have no place to put stuff. And they were, you know, getting married. So they're, of course, getting stuff for their house, getting yeah. decorations, getting towels, bedding, whatever. Right. And they literally have, you know, no Space. large attic, no extra rooms. That was like us and, in our apartment. We had nowhere to put any of the stuff that we got for the baby shower. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why I got you a big fucking bin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll specifically say like, hey, do you just want me to get you like a big plastic tote? Yeah. Because those are great too for having to take the shit home. Yep. I mean like, yes, you can open stuff up that are in like the bags and whatnot. Sometimes those bags are breaking. Those gift bags. Yes. Sometimes they're ripping. But to have a big tote to pile everything in and put a lid on, take that shit home, get, bring one big tote into the house. Mm -hmm. That's so helpful. Um, And that's one of my most helpful things you can get somebody that won't be on their registry. Mm -hmm. Because nobody's going to put a big fucking tote on their registry. Right. It's not pretty. It's not fun. Right. Well, nobody's probably nobody's thinking of that anyways. Yeah. They're just thinking of the the stuff that they need. Not Mm -hmm. how am I going to store this? Yep. I certainly didn't. Yeah. And nobody does. Nobody does until after the fact. Until Even it's when, too late and yeah. everything's piled in one room and you're like, 
Yeah. The fuck am I going to do with this? Well, That's why it took stuff, me so long to clean out her nursery. Yeah. Even stuff like for a baby shower, when you get somebody that big toe for their baby shower, now they have something to put baby clothes in that no longer fit their baby. Yeah. Or now they have something to put all the baby clothes in that they got that are size 12 months that they're not going to use for literally an entire year. Yep. Um, and it's just really, really helpful. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing that you can get that's not on a registry that is so helpful yeah. besides actual money. But ask for permission before you do it, yes. like Jamie does. You always, always ask before you do something mm-hmm. if it's a gift. Yeah. Like, just be courteous. Yeah. Like, that's all that is. It is not hard to communicate with somebody. It is not hard to just a simple text. Hey, or a phone would call. you? Ra- yeah. yeah. Would you rather me get you something like this that you have something to put all your shit in? Yeah. Um, and even like again with a baby, a lot of times they're switching rooms around to make mm-hmm. room for that baby, so they're packing away a lot of their old clothes, even or all their old shit from their spare room, and they have they need something to put all that stuff in. Um, so yes. Plastic bins, big plastic bins. Um, if, you know, if there's nothing, because a lot of times, too, registries will have stuff that's not in your price range, um, and all the stuff that is in your price range has been taken yeah. or has been bought already. So, um, honestly, stuff stuff that's more pricey, if it's not in your price range, there are probably other family members that that stuff is also not in their price range. A good mm-hmm. thing to do is to come together with those other family members that you're familiar with and do a big gift together. That yeah. way, gift each of you can pitch in and then the bride and groom are getting something that they want or need. And then not everybody is you know, financially in debt for a gift. <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of those things can be really expensive, especially mm-hmm. for baby showers, strollers, yep. um, I car seats. That shit is expensive. For our wedding registry, Dylan and I actually found a carpet cleaner we really wanted because we were tired of borrowing moms. Mm-hmm. Um, so we put that on there and uh, we didn't get it. We didn't really get anything because we didn't really have a shower. <laughs> but I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember you guys having a shower. We had a small one on for your family for my family family. because it was it was like right after yep mom but they didn't want to have to reschedule and we were having a family um yeah uh reunion anyways Mm -hmm. so we went just so we could do it yeah so i think some of your family members actually got really nice sentimental things yeah made for you guys too that and then the quilt and then um i remember we got a cheese plate um we actually got um from my for my dad's photographer cousin she mm-hmm. got us a picture frame that is labeled like um groom bride Aww. um bridesmaids groomsmen it's somewhere in the garage we yeah. i need to get pictures for it um but stuff like that it was actually they were really nice gifts um my grandma's sister she got us um like a little honeymoon basket and she put margarita Aww. glasses in there and Aww. bubble bath and matching coffee mugs that is so that cute. was really sweet mm-hmm. i really liked that um so they were it, even though they weren't stuff on the registry at that point i wasn't thinking of it because we had gone through a traumatic loss yeah but the stuff that we did get it was meaningful and nice i never got to use that fucking cheese plate and i'm kind of pissed about it oh <sighs> And I told, because Dylan put it in with the white elephant stuff that we just recently did. And oh, I told him, yeah. I don't want to get rid of that because I want to fucking use it. And he yeah. got rid of it anyways. Oh. And I'm like, I'm going to murder you in your sleep. I won't. Sleep I love him too open. much. <laughs> I sleep with my eyes open, not on purpose. <laughs> I also talk in my sleep. I have issues. Yeah. <laughs> I have issues. <laughs> Uh, but that's about <sighs> i mean that's all we've got for the do's and don'ts and i think i mean the registry yeah. stuff is pretty simple just don't be an asshole about the registry yeah just get the stuff that's on the registry um and for anyone saying hey just accept the gift graciously and you know give, give a gift it away. graciously maybe like, it's like yes you can just be gracious and accept all the stuff that you don't want or need but 
all that does is literally create more work for the person who received right. it. Especially if it's like a baby shower. Yeah. That person is pregnant. Mm-hmm. Fuck's sake. Like, yeah. they're already, tr- like, dealing with being pregnant, probably working. Yeah. They already have to deal with all the shit they got from mm-hmm. the baby shower, which is overwhelming. When you finally get all that stuff home, you have to wash it all. Mm-hmm. You have to organize it, put it away. And then to have to go through all the stuff that you didn't need Dude. and to have to figure out what to do with it, put on Facebook Marketplace and try yeah. to sell it or find somebody to give it to. Like, that is so much extra mm-hmm. work. Like, don't do that to somebody. Yeah. Just give them the things that they need that they're already asking mm-hmm. for. They put time and effort into that fucking list. Yep. Like, it takes time to do that. <laughs> I remember on our baby registry, I had purposely put Burt's Bees only stuff on there. Mm-hmm. Because when I was in high school for a history class, or it was like GovEcon or something. It was GovEcon, not history. Yeah. I had done research about a company. Mm-hmm. And it was, I chose Johnson & Johnson because they're a big Oh, yeah. They big cover company. lots. Um, and I had found out that they put talcum powder in their baby powder, mm-hmm. which they got a lawsuit for because a lot of women develop breast cancer. They put yeah. formaldehyde in their baby shampoo, which they got a lawsuit for. And... Uh, because of that, I specifically did not want to get Johnson & Johnson stuff. Yeah. Because even though they have solved the issue, you don't know that. Right. You, We have no idea what anybody's putting in any of their products. And this is a whole... We can talk about this on Conspiracy yeah. Theories. It's like, oh, yes, yeah. it's the law for them to put the ingredients on there. But how many people actually know what those ingredients names really are? And what... Yeah. What yep. they mean. So I had purposely not put Johnson & Johnson stuff on there. And I was talking to one of my friends who we were pregnant together. She had her baby three months before I had mine. Mm-hmm. I was talking to her about not wanting Johnson & Johnson stuff and only wanting like Burt's Bees or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, her mom stuff. had asked her, do you know what kind of soap Mary wants? And she told her mom, not Johnson & Johnson. And then her mom goes, well, how do you know that? How the fuck do you think she knows? Do you think we not talk all the time? Why would why, why would she you... ask her and then and then say be that upset her about answer... the answer? What? Oh my god! And I got Johnson and Johnson stuff anyways, <laughs> but I got Johnson and Johnson from everybody except for like one or two people who got me stuff from the registry. Ah, uh, so I'm sorry. I've got. A bunch... I also didn't get you stuff from the registry, but like no, most... but you got me a lot of hand me down stuff, which is fine. Which is so. Like... I would rather have hand me downs than new stuff because then I feel less bad about. <laughs> ruining them. Well, and that's why I gave you hand me downs yeah. in the first place was because it's like here, here's shit that already has one stain right. on it. You're not gonna well, worry. And about it helps it. that our children are pretty much a year apart. They're five exactly. days away from yeah. being exactly a year apart. So yeah. So they're just, you know, one of them's one year behind the other and the sizes are perfect yeah. every year. Um, I mean, there was a few new things I got for you. I just, I feel like it's really tacky to go to somebody's party that's like a wedding shower baby mm-hmm. and get them pre-used stuff. <laughs> like, and I'm not, like, I'm poor. I'm broke. Like, yeah. I prefer to have used stuff yeah. anyways. Like, I love going to secondhand places and stuff like that. Garage sales but, like, and stuff. Yeah. But, like, if I'm giving somebody something, I don't want to give them something that's been used. Yeah. Just out of respect. Um, But, like, if I get used stuff, whatever. Yeah. I don't fucking care. That's fine. Get me right. refurbished shit. Get me, like, I don't know, antique stuff. I don't care. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'd rather not have people buying me a bunch of brand new stuff and further putting garbage into the world yeah like we just need to be reusing stuff all the time instead of buying that, new all the time that's why i still have all the johnson and johnson stuff because i don't want to throw it away right but i also don't want to give it to somebody else because i'm paranoid about it yeah i don't want to put that on somebody else's kid yeah well what the fuck do i do with it otherwise like dylan opened it like, opened a bottle of like baby shampoo yeah. of the johnson and johnson stuff to use on her and i like kind of like i didn't freak out but i was like don't ever again yeah like this one time whatever because you are it's too late now yeah but i would rather that you didn't he was like well why do we still have it and i was like i don't want to throw it away yeah and that i feel like that also comes from Growing up without money, yeah, you always want to keep things because you don't want to have to buy yeah. new. But like in that case, yeah, you don't want to burden somebody else's kid. And 
but also in that case, I would say, hey, look, if somebody really needs baby wash and can't even afford any, yeah, by all means, take this. It will mm-hmm. get you through. Um, I might just but... put it on in our fa- the Facebook group you invited me to. Oh, the free one. Yeah, and just be like, you can fucking have it. Yeah, here, take it. Yeah, I've given away so much stuff on there. Um, it's been nice. I mean, it kind of sucks not getting money from things. Like, because it's like, yeah, I have so much stuff that I put money into. But at the same time, I feel so much better just getting that shit out of my house. Yeah. Oh, my God. And my house is so small and there's six of us living there. And I don't have a dishwasher. (coughs) I don't have a dishwasher. And there's six (laughs) people living at my house. And it's dog. Like, yeah. Dishes by hand. The fuck? Yuck. What the fuck year is this? I need a dishwasher. <laughs> we need to get sponsors so I can make some money off of this so I can get myself a dishwasher. God, before we can get sponsors, we have to get enough plays. I know. Yeah, we'll get there. Please listen. <laughs> Please listen to our demands. <laughs> our next episode, we will be hypnotizing you. <laughs> uh, but we should probably end it here. Yeah. Because we're getting close to an hour and a half. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um. So, thanks if you stayed this long to listen. Mm-hmm. We so appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, thanks for listening to us. This was kind of like a ranty episode almost. We I think we needed it. Got a little heated in there yeah. just hating on people doing stupid things. Well, don't be a dumbass, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't be an consider, idiot. Consider the following. Just don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's just do it and then there's just don't. <laughs> just do it just don't don't just don't i love that you tapped don't. the pop filter like the pop filter was gonna make the sound the pop and then filter you is gonna around. anti-sound it oh just that's perfect don't don't <laughs> don't oh, all right and that's it for us we gotta go boob feed our kids yeah take so care of our kids stay alive yeah enjoy all right talk to you later i said enjoy like we're starting the episode (laughs) (laughs) enjoy your lives away from (laughs) listening to us oh gosh peace bye okay guys before we end the episode um we just wanted to say real quick that we do do like q a's and polls at the end of our episodes um so you are more than free to participate in those. We actually encourage it. More than free. More than free. I would love to be. This is free. America. <laughs> Wake up, cocksuckers. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also do have an email that I have linked in the description. Um, and you are more than welcome to email us some stories about um whatever we've been talking about. So, like, if you have. Um, for like the past episode we talked about our weddings and our experiences mm-hmm. you are more than welcome to email us about your wedding and your experiences yeah, with those please share yep we'd love to hear them for the episode we just did you are more than welcome to email us the do's and don'ts for those some stories you have for like some uh unright or unruly guests or whatever mm-hmm. um experiences with the registries you might have had um literally your own do's and don'ts for yep. weddings is there something that we miss that you're like hey um this is a huge thing absolutely so definitely let us know um we'll if you have any stories uh let us know if you'd like us to share them mm-hmm. on our podcast we'll definitely do that anonymously definitely 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 <laughs> take a shot every time jamie says definitely um what we could also do is you can put in the email if you are okay with us saying your name or not that way, if we are telling the story and your name is in it, we don't have to worry about whatever. Or you can give us a fake name. Um, that way you stay anonymous. We can figure it out later on. Yeah. Um, Rules of anonymity. 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 I almost said that right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, um, there's not much else. Uh, so yeah. Check the links in the description. Click it link. All right. Bye, guys.